JFT just fair and direct. Good morning everyone and welcome to JFD's daily market review for March the 11th. I am Harlambos Pissuros, Head of Research here at JFD. I will talk about yesterday's mini market movers, what's my opinion moving ahead, what are today's important events and how they could affect the markets. But before we start, let's read our disclaimer. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not, be should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds uh, to read the rest, and then we will jump into our analysis. Okay, the US dollar traded uh, mixed against the other major currencies on Thursday and during the Asian session Friday. It gained against GBP, the Euro, JPY, and CHF in that order, while it slightly underperformed versus CAT, AUD, and NZD. The strengthening of the US dollar against the pound and the Euro suggests that sentiment was dented again by developments surrounding the crisis in Ukraine. However, the failure of the safe havens Yen and Frank to stay supported and the strengthening of the risk-linked um, Luni, Aussie and Kiwi point otherwise. Thus, in order to clear things up, we prefer to turn our gaze to the equity world. Here we see that major European and US indices traded in the red with Asia following suit. The only exception uh, among the indices under our radar was China Shanghai Composite which gained 0.41%. This may have been the result of negotiations between Russia and Ukraine uh, falling apart as well as a more hoggish than expected ECB and accelerating US inflation. The ECB kept all three of its main interest rates unchanged, as was widely anticipated, but decided to end uh, its uh, asset purchase program in the third quarter without hinting that any interest rate hikes will be delayed due to the geopolitical, uh, due to the, uh, due to the geopolitical tensions. President Lagarde said that the risks to the economic outlook have increased uh, sustainably, but also that inflation could be considerably higher than forecast, combined with a large upside the revision to the inflation uh, forecast uh, for this year. This suggests uh, that uh, most policymakers view the risk of high inflation outweighing concerns on how geopolitics could affect uh, economic growth. This increased speculation for higher rates later this year, with market participants now pricing in uh, nearly 50 basis points by, uh, by the end of the year. The euro initially spiked higher due to that, but it was quick to give back those gains and trade even lower against its US counterpart, perhaps due to the fallout in talks between Russia and Ukraine, but also due to, the further, uh, due to further acceleration in US inflation. Remember that when testifying before Congress, Fed Chair uh, Powell said that he is ready to use larger or more frequent rate hikes if inflation doesn't slow, and yesterday's data may have added uh, to speculation on that front. Indeed, according to the yields of the Fed Fund futures, market participants are now pricing in slightly more than six quarter point rate increases by, by the end of uh, this year. Now, as for today's events, during the, uh, during the early European session, we already got the UK monthly GDP for January, as well as the industrial production and manufacturing production rates uh, for the same month, all of which decently beat estimates. However, in our view, this is far from enhancing the case for a double hike at the Bank of England's upcoming gathering, and this is evident by the fact that the pound did not respond at the time of the release. With Russia's invasion of Ukraine raising concerns over the global economic performance, we see a 25 basis points hike as the best uh, case scenario. Later in the day, Canada's employment report for February is scheduled to be released. The unemployment rate is expected to have slid to 6.2% from 6.5%, while the employment change is forecast to have uh, is forecast to show that the economy has added 160,000 jobs after losing 200.1 thousand in January. In our view, this will be a decent report, which, uh, following the better than expected GDP for the fourth quarter last week, as well as the upside surprise in Canadian CPIs for January could increase speculation over a rate hike by the Bank of Canada at, 
at its upcoming gathering. Let's not forget that although officials stood pat last time, they noted that they expect rates to increase and that the overall economic slack is now absorbed. So that's it uh, from me. Thank you very much for watching and listening. For those who are interested in learning about the main events of the week much earlier, you can subscribe to the Weekly Market Outlook webinar, which I'm holding every Monday at 8 o'clock a.m. GMT. You can find the link in the description below. So goodbye, have a great day, a great weekend, and I'm looking forward to seeing you here again next week. JFT, just fair and direct.